San Diego, home to over 100 breweries. From those that have stood the test of time to those just opening their doors. Whether it's a small brewery producing 700 barrels a year or a major operation producing 200,000, they have one thing in common, competing for the approval of beer enthusiasts everywhere. Delk with 100 Beers 30 Days and the Promiscuous Palette. I've published over 700 beer reviews and you can currently find me as the weekly drink writer for Discover SD by the Union Tribune. Tonight we're going to have a good old-fashioned craft beer taste off, but before we get to the details, let's meet our brewers. Eric O'Connor, brewmaster at Thorn Street Brewery. While living in Europe, this scientist fell in love with the bold and creative beers made there. After returning to San Diego, Eric, along with his childhood friend and homebrewing rival, Dan Carrico, opened Thorn Street Brewery in the same location where they once purchased their homebrewing supplies. Ryan Brooks, head brewer at Coronado Brewing Company. Passionate musician and home brewer, Ryan learned the big brewing ropes at one of the largest craft breweries in Sydney, Australia, Malt Shovel Brewery. After moving back to San Diego in 2011, Ryan brought that passion and knowledge with him to help bring Coronado Brewing Company to the next level. You can argue that San Diego is the craft beer mecca of the world. With breweries like Stone, Ballast Point, and Green Flash, San Diego craft beer has taken the world by storm. In the past few years, there's been an explosion of smaller breweries that are now competing with the larger breweries, and it makes decisions for the consumer all the more difficult. There's only so many tap handles and so many places in the cooler, and buyers and consumers have to find out what is the best craft beer to choose. You know, I'm San Diego local, grew up kind of surfing around San Diego. I moved to the UK for about six years, and, and everywhere you went, the beer was just at such a higher level than I, than, than I kind of was used to. When I came back, there, this whole revolution had happened in my hometown that kind of while I was away, I was just like, I've got to figure out how to make this beer. Uh, right now, I'm the head brewer at Coronado. Um, so my role is just basically kind of learning how to build this company and keep the beers the same way, if not better. When I first started, it was like crazy, crazy, crazy. They couldn't keep up down the island, they couldn't produce enough beer, so they had purchased a, another small brewery um, close to the airport called Mission Brewing Plaza. And that was my first job here at Coronado, and it was the kind of the Band-Aid brewery at the time before this got built up here. This is Alchemy. This foodie hotspot is known for its seasonal menu based on sustainable ingredients, craft cocktails, wine, and of course, local craft beer. And this is the scene of our craft beer taste off with Thorn Street Brewery and Coronado Brewing Company. Well, I mean, the challenge is to, to start brewing, you know, the struggle to go from, okay, we want to open a brewery to, Having a local fan, you know, local clients and 40 local accounts that all buy your beer and put it on tap. The old saying is, you just went and ruined a perfectly good hobby. And we all have day jobs as well. So we're like trying to balance day jobs with spending time here. And it, it put a lot of stress on, on our lives and our, uh, on our families. But, um, you yeah, know, it was worth it. It is worth it. And it, it hopefully will continue to be worth it. Hops, one of the biggest things we do in our beer, the most important thing for a lot of these beers, hard to get. We can't get a lot of the most popular ones we'd like to get our hands on. Another thing um, is we have a great team here, but uh, some of the younger people I do have, have to be nervous about and be cautious to make sure that one little thing could mess up a whole batch or kind of change it a bit. So consistency is our biggest, most important thing here. And I do get nervous about that.
Beer Taste Off is going to be pitting a small production facility up against one of the larger breweries here in San Diego. And we're going to be looking at the most popular style here, the very famous IPA. I'm really tempted to bring the Menace, which is our 10% IPA, which we don't have all the time. It's very, very drinkable for a 10% IPA. It's got a ton of hop aroma, a ton of hop flavor. I'm tempted to bring that, and, you know, the, the people may decide it's a little too, you know, a little too much, but that's, that's fine. So, like, we kind of set out to be a little too much. Uh, I'm bringing our Islander IPA. It's a, basically an American West Coast style IPA. Big hop forward beer with notes of pine, citrus, pineapple. Um, it's pretty standard beer at 7%, nothing too strong. Uh, my motto is we can't drink like three pints of any one of our beers. And it's Definitely like B. It wasn't as super hoppy on the back and not so bitter, a little maltier. I definitely preferred A. I like it. And why was that? Um, it's got a little bit different of a hoppy flavor. I like the floral hop presentation at the front and it has a nice clean finish. This is a beautiful beer. It's very hoppy, but I'm not an IPA kind of guy, so I'm going to vote for this one. I prefer the B only because it was a lighter finish. Uh, I, did, I too preferred the B. Um, I really like the hoppy flavor. This one, which is the hoppier one which it looks like I'll be um, taking his. <laughs> Dr. Bill, one of the top craft beer experts in the world and ambassador for Stone Brewing. Nate Sirocco, chef for Toronado and all around San Diego beer guy. Tonight we're judging Coronado's Islander IPA up against Thorn Street Brewery's The Menace Double IPA. Even though these are different styles of IPA, we're looking for the most balanced entry. We're going to be judging on color, head retention, clarity, aroma, and flavor. Beer A is a beautiful golden color, obviously a San Diego Pale Ale, aka IPA. Pine really comes to the front, has great grapefruit pithiness, um, nice little bready malt, uh, really well balanced IPA. I really enjoyed as a fantastic summer IPA. It's light, it's refreshing, it's the kind of beer that you want to have after a run or exercise or being on the beach. Beautiful San Diego IPA, great with food. Super citrusy, really clean, nothing too overwhelming. The second one tasted about 9%. Definitely not the same realm of IPAs. This one is a little boozy on the nose, especially in the tulips you get that first inhale, a uh, little more alcohol. I get a little more almost overripe guava, both great beers, both great IPA beers. My only critique of B is that um, I would just pull back on the hop a little bit. I think that, again, the aroma is fantastic, um, but the palate is super concentrated. Once again, beautiful color, nice clarity, uh, darker in color, uh, almost a larger viscosity in it. To me, it seems like a great double IPA, so both beers are quite enjoyable. Okay, the judging is finished, and let me just say, we loved both beers, and it came down to just a few points between the two. And again, it comes down to what your style of IPA is and what you really love to drink. And it was a very, very close match. But the winner is...
Beer A. And Beer A was from Coronado Brewing. It was their Islander IPA. So congratulations to Coronado Islander IPA for the win on this craft beer taste off. Even though there's a lot of competition in the craft beer world, there's also a lot of camaraderie and collaboration. And the future couldn't be brighter for small and large breweries in San Diego, the craft beer mecca of the nation.